guys, welcome back. Today we're at Copart in beautiful Los Angeles and everything you've heard about California, turns out it's true. Legally, you have to do an hour of yoga a day. It's insanely expensive. I'm sorry, what? And of course, the supercars, they're everywhere. So it should come as no surprise whatsoever that tucked away on the outskirts of LA lies this metal building full of wrecked exotics. In fact, the average price of the cars we're gonna be looking at today, $200,000. That of course includes the $512,000 Ferrari F8 Tributo, but my personal favorite, this $576,000 Lamborghini Huracan STO. But wait, there's more. In just a few short hours, this STO it runs at auction, and you know we're gonna watch it together live. One of the coolest things about these STOs, that instead of a traditional hood, fenders, bumper design, that entire front piece, it's one big carbon assembly. Of course, I already poked around it just a little bit while this latch over here is undone. When you get around to the passenger side, that latch pin right there, unfortunately, it is bent pretty significantly. So we're not gonna pull that front clamshell off. But lucky for us, being that the bottom half of it is missing, we can still get under there and take a good look. First off, taking a peep through the missing headlight, which may or may not be in the car. We'll have to check on that in a second. You can see it does have some cooler damage, a little bit of radiator damage, but at the very least, they're still there. Far and away, the most important part of this is, of course, the frame. I can't imagine with how complex this car is that the frame is anything resembling easy to fix. On a non-damage related note, those brake ducts there, that's pretty sick. Anyway, back to the point. From what I can see here, there's a lot of brackets damage, which again, it's not gonna be cheap, but it's much, much better and much easier to fix than the frame. Using all available holes here, I can't really see any damage down there, though I do see some kind of extra spare part. Moving on to the other hole, what looks like more spare parts. Now let's check out the driver's side here. I don't think I need to say this, but me looking through a headlight hole, trying to ID frame damage, it's not super scientific. But just like the passenger side, I can't see any damage. There's no kinks, no broken seam sealer. I can't see any broken welds at least. Now this is where things get interesting. You can see all that broken carbon. Obviously that's a shame because that carbon is absolutely gorgeous. In addition to that, you have some type of broken hose here, which kind of looks like a normal vacuum line, but it's nicely loomed. Or well, it was nicely loomed. More broken wiring there. You can also see those coolers on the bottom are pretty heavily damaged. Definitely gonna need to be replaced. More importantly, however, you can see some kind of insurance mark there on the frame. Honestly, that's probably what ended up totaling this car. You can see the STO sticker there. Those of you more familiar with Lamborghini are gonna have to tell me if this frame is like specific to the STO. Over here, some broken wiring. Right there is what I assume is the support bracket for the bottom of that clamshell. Obviously on this side, it's completely missing. Still though, that frame, it just doesn't look bad. It just looks like it's nicked in that one spot. Now we all know it's gonna take a lot to total a $576,000 car. Sometimes, however, where you find these newer cars getting totaled, even if the damage doesn't really get it there, is the fact that the parts simply aren't available. And based on what I'm seeing on this so far, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. The counter argument for that, of course, is what does this front clamshell cost? It very well could be a $150,000 part from Lamborghini. I genuinely don't know. Now getting around the car a little bit, everything on this driver's side here looks really, really good. Until, well, you get around here to the back end. Generally, this would only be here if something was damaged. I have to imagine that this rear bumper was kind of hanging off and they just stuck it back on. And if you look here, I'm gonna guess that's the side marker connector, which is, well, not connected to the side marker any longer. So now it's starting to make a little more sense because you see there's a little bit of damage here on the back. That wheel got absolutely smoked. I don't know what it hit, but it hit it really hard. Of course, being that we don't have the car on the lift, we can only decipher so much about what's going on here in the back end, but let's check the other side. Same deal with no wheel damage. The rear bumper is slightly loose there. That tape's probably what's holding that on. Here you have some not broken, but disconnected wiring. Other than maybe some tabs on the side though, the rear bumper actually looks like it's in pretty good shape. And while this can certainly be said for absolutely everything on this car, I'm positive it wouldn't be cheap to replace. So if you can get this thing and get away with just repairing the sides of the rear bumper there, I'm gonna call that a massive W. And on the topic of expensive, this massive carbon wing, that center carbon fiber blade, I honestly don't even know what that does. Most of the tech on this car is significantly above my pay grade, but all of it, it looks intact. Absolutely the most careful I've ever been with any car I've touched at Copart, but here we are. 
exactly as you would expect an absolutely gorgeous beautiful clean and most importantly fully intact lamborghini engine bay now is there absolutely any reason that it shouldn't look like this on a 642 mile sto absolutely not and here we go as i was sitting here gawking over this beautiful engine bay i happened to notice one slight detail that's a pretty significant piece of frame there that is completely snapped off Presumably this car took some big hit underneath. Maybe it has something to do with that wheel damage over there. While I was hoping we could follow that down and it was like a bolt on bracket or something, it doesn't look like that's the case. If we wedge our camera in there, you can also see that the insurance guy, he found that too. You can see it marked from the outside right there. From what we've seen so far, that's 110% gonna be the biggest hurdle in this rebuild. Down here, there's some more insurance markings. That piece there is not part of the clamshell to my knowledge. You see on the A pillar there where I guess the clamshell got into it a little bit, no big deal, that's just paint. Now for the question that's been on my mind this entire time, and I'm sure you guys are wondering too, does it start? Before we do that, we would be amiss if we didn't take just a second to check out these beautiful carbon door panels. Moving on, there is the ABS pump, and I'm pretty sure that's not where it's supposed to be, so yeah, there's that. Driver bag blown, passenger bag blown, driver knee bag blown, so you're going to have to attend to all that. Otherwise, definitely awesome of Copart to take the time to cover up the seats with plastic. The last thing you want after spending presumably two or $300,000 on a wrecked car is to have stained seats. We obviously have a little power here. Is it going to start? That's another question. We have a jump box on it. We definitely have some power, but there is a lot of lights flashing up there. So that is unfortunate for whatever reason. It is not going to start for us now. So is it a little disappointing that we couldn't hear this thing run in person? Obviously. We still have a couple hours until it runs at auction. Fortunately for us, we have a lot more cars to cover, including this McLaren right next to it. This is gonna sound super weird to say about a McLaren, but this is actually one of the cheaper cars we're gonna see today. This 2012 MP4 12C only has a retail value of $128,000. It also looks like it might end up being one of the better condition cars we see today. I did notice earlier that there's a big pile of parts sitting behind it, all of which of course are pretty easily identifiable as having came from right there on the rear end. As far as the drivetrain, I can't see any damage to that. It does look like there's a bunch of dirt in there. Maybe this thing had an off-road excursion. As far as the suspension and whatnot, that actually doesn't look too bad either. What's left of the rear bumper doesn't look too bad. It has a ding right there, no big deal. Unlike our Huracan friend, this one actually attaches as it should. Over here on this side, same deal, everything's intact. Obviously we're missing a little something down here. Now I'm not super familiar with the makeup of these cars, but it looks like this is some kind of just rear side skirt piece. And if I had to guess, that would be it right there. It looks though that this is a mix of old damaged stuff and a couple new parts. Maybe this is one of those cars that they started to repair and just never finished for whatever reason. While that might seem a little sketchy, it's not always the case. Sometimes they get into it and then the owner just decides that they really don't want the car back. They don't want a car that's been previously wrecked like this, so they push the insurance company to total it. Truthfully, there's not much to cover on the damage front on this car. The rest of the car is actually beautiful. Personally, I'm not a big fan of these older McLarens, but if I had to have one, it would probably look something like this. There's still loads of carbon on this. It's in really good shape. I believe this entire car is actually PPF'd. You have the carbon mirrors here as well, also in phenomenal shape. A nice carbon spoiler there, which does have a little bit of peeling PPF, nothing serious. Overall, not only is this one of the cleanest MP4 12 Cs I've seen, it might be one of the cleanest exotics I've seen at salvage auction, period. If we had any questions about the PPF, I think that tells us everything we need to know right there. One other thing of note, it's got a GoPro mount on it. We all know what they say about backwards facing GoPros, right? The wheels, the tires, even the brakes, everything's just in really, really good shape on this car. Now let's hope we have a little better luck on this one than we did on the STO over there and see if we can actually get it to start. Once again, we do have power in here. Okay, a lot of things are happening here. Turn signal off. Don't know what that sound is. Flashing lights everywhere. Well, it might not be STO sounds, I mean, still. As is the case with any of the cars we start here, we're definitely not gonna let them run long. 
I'm really having trouble coming up with anything on this car that's honestly just not awesome. Everything's in phenomenal shape. This has to rank right up there with the best of the best that I've ever seen at salvage auction. Now, of course, disclaimer time. I don't have this car on a lift. Being that it's undercarriage damage, it's gonna be really hard to figure out what's going on, unless, well, you do have it on a lift. It's still a six digit totaled car. There's gonna be something else wrong with it, but I have to say, if I was in the market for an MP412C, this is probably a great one. This guy here, albeit slightly, has kind of changed the way I feel about MP412Cs. I actually might consider buying one at some point. I could probably buy this one. I might not even need a loan for it. What is this? A... 570s i suppose rather it was a 570s there's a lot to take in here none of which is good so that last one might have been one of the best mclarens i've seen this one definitely one of the worst i promise you we're gonna find some positive any positives we do find are definitely gonna be on the parts front so say we're trying to fix another mclaren what does this one have to offer first things first i see a good hub there i see a good upper control arm i'm assuming a good lower control arm as well there's some wiring up here which hasn't been affected by the fire how complete that is i don't know one of the biggest deal on these is the carbon tub i have to assume though the back here that carbon tub the fire got the best of it. On the interior, that driver's seat, that looks like that guy from that thing. And the weird part about this car is that somebody definitely took some parts off of it. The fire, it didn't uninstall the steering wheel, I promise you. I'm also pretty positive it didn't take the radio. So not only is this car a fire car, it looks like it was stripped at some point as well. We do have a fairly poor shape, but somewhat intact passenger seat. There is definitely some good interior left. You have that center console, you have the dash, though it's definitely gonna need to be heavily, heavily worked. On the passenger rear where the fire wasn't, it actually doesn't look that bad. Clearly somebody has definitely robbed some suspension off of it, but you can at least see it does have one turbo there. The engine is in there. Pretty much the entire rest of the rear end is completely destroyed by the fire. You might have one good roof panel here. Some of you guys might have to school me on this. I'm going to lean towards no. I highly doubt that those rails that are going back into that carbon tub are useful for anything outside of the carbon tub. Meaning, of course, that if you have a car that's hit back here, you can't cut in this rail. Again, I'm assuming McLaren guys, let me know in the comments. Though this car has a retail value of $180,000 according to Copart, I have a slight hunch that this one's going to go for just a little bit less than that MP412C. Now, next up, we have a 2014 V10 R8. Definitely an expensive car, not STO expensive. With the exception being some suspension damage there, this isn't too far off from what our R8 cart started out as. In fact, this car, at least on the driver's side, the rear end's actually in much better shape than ours was. Over here on the passenger side, I did notice the carbon blade is sitting up there in the front. It's definitely a little weird considering I don't see really any discernible damage. You have pretty much nothing else i don't know what exactly happened to it definitely pretty weird considering the rest of the car has not a single scratch on the passenger side so with the exception of that one mysterious carbon fiber blade off there it looks like every bit of damage is isolated to right here in this front driver corner that's the good news the bad news it's a lot of damage these aluminum chassis r8s tend to crack in a few specific places on the chassis i'm not seeing any of that you can see right there on that upper frame rail section that it does have a little gouge that bracket that comes off to the side it's broken in there cut there luckily that's not as big of a deal as it seems like because it bolts on this guy here another bolt on piece of frame that's all kinked up once again no big deal the a pillar definitely took a good whack there it's not as simple as paint like it was on the sto so you're gonna have to address that unfortunately it looks like it curled it over onto the windshield gave that a nice little break another break right there i'm not quite sure what caused that seeing what else we have in the front obviously that is the entire suspension corner that just got completely ripped out didn't think i was going to get to look at the inside of an r8 axle today but here we are on this r8 you're going to need a hood you're going to need a front bumper you're going to probably need that center cooler actually i don't know that may have survived let's do our crash reconstruction here you see that clean part of the fender liner i'm going to take a wild guess and assume that that wheel got pushed back into it that in turn kinked that door you see that side skirt down there is kinked up pretty good you may be able to fix that though if i recall they're aluminum it actually looks like the door got something back there as well but from what i can see doesn't look horrendous. Let's go back here to the back of the door and eh, that's a little more scary. 
Hopefully that didn't do anything more serious to the chassis. Hopefully it's simply the door getting pushed back on the hinges, hitting that blade, and that's where it stops. The rear quarter to roof line is consistent. That's good. The back of the blade there, that is consistent and square all the way around. Hatch is good. The, ooh, ooh. <laughs> that is touching. So it looks like energy may have transferred in this car just a little bit more than I had originally thought. That would have very obviously been pretty hard to pick up in pictures, so I'm glad we got to look at this car. Just like the STO, I've been eyeing this car up all day. I've personally never seen one at auction before, so needless to say, I'm super excited about it. Copar couldn't get it to power up. They couldn't even get mileage off of it. It's definitely not uncommon for some cars when they blow airbags, like that, to have some kind of fusible link that just goes boom. And unless we can find any kind of damage up here in the front that leads me to believe there's something bigger going on, I'm gonna assume that's probably what happened in this case. Even in this state, this is just such a fantastically beautiful car. I suppose one could say there's something a little more beautiful about seeing it like this. Speaking theoretically, of course, because I don't want you guys after me in the comments. We'll take a quick walk around it here, but it appears that the damage is all in that front corner. Especially when it comes to a car this expensive, you don't want to have to go through all the trouble of fixing this front end, which is not going to be cheap, easy, fun, anything. And then realize you have to attend to a smashed rear end as well. Nothing going on weird in the interior. So yeah, it looks like this is what we have to deal with. So let's see just how difficult that's gonna be. Of all the major supercar manufacturers, Ferrari is probably the one I know the least about. So if I get some things wrong here, you guys are gonna have to forgive me, or better yet, go down in the comments, tell me I'm an idiot and correct me. A couple context clues that lead me to believe there was some kind of cooler there that got wiped off. The hoses that you see disconnected, along with the radiator that's sitting in the front. So though they are included, how nice of them to do that, they're gonna to need to be replaced. Now where you may get lucky, and we're not gonna be able to fully tell because it's really in there and this thing is taped shut, is that wheel's in there. The wheel itself, I'm positive that's gonna be damaged. More importantly though, the carbon ceramic rotor. If you've ever had a car with carbon ceramic rotors, you already know how expensive they are. If you haven't, go head on over to eBay Motors, type in carbon ceramic rotor. I'll let you find out for yourself. I don't want to break the bad news for you. If that rotor happened to be intact, that would be a massive win. If you look right there, excuse the lighting, you can see it's cracked in half. So far on the menu, we have wheel, full suspension corner, obviously a fender, obviously a door. This mirror, the missing part is right there, thankfully. And it looks like we have PPF to thank for that. Under any normal circumstance, I'd say, hey, it looks like this, you just buy yourself a new mirror not a Ferrari mirror. If you have this piece, you try to fix that. Again, Ferrari ignorance here. I don't know what this costs. It's probably like five grand. The hood, it looks like that got it pretty well too, though that I'd assume you could fix. Same deal with the front here. It's just a little crease, dented, whatever you want to call it. Again, just like that mirror. If I have the parts available to me, I'm gonna try my best to fix that. The last thing I wanna do is just open checkbook rebuild a Ferrari because those checks, they're gonna bounce by the end of it. This front tub here, I can't tell what material it is because of this heat shielding, but it looks like it may be carbon. The best I can tell from the naked eye without, you know, again, having the car on the lift, it looks like they're intact. Now for some more things that are not intact, this wiring harness, it straight up got deep pen, so I don't know what that goes to but honestly, it looks like you may be able to repen a connector there. If that's the case, and the rest of this harness is not damaged, that's gonna save you a lot of money. Structurally, I don't know how major it is, but that's a cracked weld there. Down here, this is ever so slightly scuffed, dented, dinged, whatever you wanna call that. We might look at this and think it's not that big of a deal. Would I stick a door back over this? 100%. But someone who owns a half a million dollar Ferrari, they're not like you and I. They want it fixed, they want it fixed completely. So something as simple as that little gouge right there, that could add $100,000 onto the repair bill. That of course depends on how much this section of the body is from Ferrari, if it's replaceable and how labor intensive it is to replace. The upper hinge, that actually doesn't look too bad. Down here, you can see the lowers all twisted, bent in, up, whatever. All the other lines on this car, they are pretty much perfect. Pretty common knowledge to most car guys, but when you have a wreck that's bad enough where say it pushes the quarter over the rear bumper, the body gap there is about that big, and over here it's that big. That's when you run into an issue. So when you see a car like this and everything's pretty straight, everything lines up, 
always a good sign. Still to this day, what happens to a car when it's wrecked, the way motion and energy shifts around is super fascinating to me. So if you haven't got a chance to really look heavily into that, I truly recommend going down to your local junkyard. Even if you don't need to buy anything, you'll learn a ton just by looking at cars. Now of the suspension we have left, you have a shock though it's definitely bent. I don't know what's going to be good down here. You might get away with being able to replace a tie rod inner and outer there. That upper control arm on the passenger side completely snapped off. It's really hard to sneak the camera in there, but you can probably see that steering rack is also completely broken. I may be once again showing my Ferrari ignorance here, but I'm going to assume that you have to take these off to get this engine cover off. So we're just going to go ahead and peek through it the best we can. That didn't do us much good, but everything looks kosher in there. This is definitely one of those wrecks that you would expect the engine to be perfectly fine. So I don't really have any questions about that, but of course that's easy for me to say because I'm not the one buying this car. Moral of the story with this half a million dollar Ferrari, I really don't think it's a bad car. It's obviously gonna be super expensive to fix, but I do think this is one of those cars that once you go through the massive expense and trouble of fixing this car, I think you're gonna have yourself a phenomenal finished product. There's obviously a ton of bad with the car, but just take a second and look at this interior. There's very clearly a ton of good as well. The interior, it's in phenomenal shape. Quite literally, other than this airbag right here being blown, it looks like a car you'd find on a dealership lot. In fact, the only other issue I can find at all, this guy right here. You're gonna need to replace the seatbelt. Who knows how much that is? The keys are intact in there. It's pretty hard to believe, but it didn't blow either of the driver or passenger airbag. The passenger, that's pretty easy to understand. There simply might not have been one. The drivers though, this is one of those times where I think it was borderline. Now, as long as the driver in this accident was okay, in that case, we're really thankful that driver airbag didn't blow because that just saved you a ton of money. And guys, now that we're done that, it's time to check out the car that I will own someday. It's not the STO up there. It's not the Tributo. It's definitely not the Rolls. Coming as not a shock to a single one of our channel regulars, it's this guy right here, a 992 GT3. If you do happen to be new to the channel, first off, my name's Lee, nice to meet you. I like Corvettes, I like Porsches, the end. It's both poetic and depressing that I also happened to drive my first 992 GT3 yesterday. I think this goes for every single person who has ever driven one of these magnificent cars. I would now do really, really bad things to get one. So when I see one totaled, one that needs, you know, just a little bit of work, some assembly required, as I like to call it, this gets the wheels turning. First off, I can see it from a mile away, that front bumper beam, that's ripped off. You're gonna need to replace that. We have a headlight down there that may be usable for parts. Unlike the Ferrari over here, we all know there's a base 911. So not every single 911 costs $300,000. The one you're looking at right now though, does cost $300,000, $316 to be exact. You may be wondering why I'm bringing up base model cars. We're not here to look at base models. We're here to look at super expensive stuff like this. Well, one of the main benefits to driving the so-called normal person supercar is that sometimes, given they're the same package, the same options, you can source parts like this headlight here from a regular 911. That generally saves you a ton of money. They're not super specialty like the parts for the F8 are. Once again, that leads to lower parts prices. Always a good thing in the salvage world. Another good thing, since like 1945, Porsches have pretty much been the same you know, basically. With that, this front tub design I am pretty familiar with. It's not that far off from the GT4 I just rebuilt. And looking at it from here, you can see right up there, there's a little bit of damage. That's not something you necessarily need to worry about fixing. Obviously that big hole is where the headlight will be. So you're looking at the fender now, that right there is the hood. And that crumpled piece you see way in there, that's the corner of the front tub. That is something that needs to be fixed. That's the frame rail. That's what we're worried about. That tub stuff, it's technically structural, yes, but honestly, any idiot can replace that. Quite literally any idiot. And from what we can see here, which granite is not much, it looks like that rail's okay. I don't know if we're gonna be able to see any more in there. At the very least, there's no insurance markings though. I actually don't see any markings on this entire car, so we can't put much faith into that, but I don't see anything that would lead me to believe there's frame damage. This particular GT3 was unfortunately not lucky enough to just have the damage isolated to up there. This door, I don't know what happened here. It 
kind of looks like a tire ran down it, though something definitely opened up that door in the front right there. What can we infer from this window being taped up like that? One, the door doesn't work, or two, it has no power. Here's some very good news for whoever ends up with this car, this carbon roof. It's in phenomenal shape and it did not get damaged. Whatever went down the side of that car also got this rear wheel a little, the front wheel up there, that one's perfectly intact. It also got the rear quarter here, which is kind of a shame. Normally I would say we do our best to try to fix that. The rear bumper, we can definitely fix that. But being that you have this entire mess that you have to deal with down there on the rocker, it may be easier just to replace the entire side of the car. As far as the rear goes, that actually looks like it's in really good shape. I can't see any damage whatsoever back here. As for the driver's side, at least until we get up there to the front, it looks actually pretty good. Test our gaps there. That actually looks good. Obviously, we have issues there, but we already knew that. The big one here is going to be the door gap. Flawless. Absolutely flawless. With this car, just like the Tributo, they couldn't get any power to it. One big downside, depending on who you ask, this doesn't have the carbon buckets. I'm a massive fan of those, so when I see a GT3 without them, it just kind of feels lacking to me. Otherwise, optioned very nicely, beautiful blue stitching there all the way across. You have yellow trim there. It is a manual, yes. The one I drove yesterday at Porsche Experience Center LA, that guy was a PDK. It was awesome. But I have to admit, if I had the choice, like most of you guys, I'm taking a manual. Other than the fact that they picked the wrong seats when they ordered this, the interior, it's in pretty phenomenal shape. You have the driver bag there, the driver knee bag down there, that also blue. Passenger curtain, driver curtain, the only airbag that did not blow that passenger dash bag over there. It goes without saying that when we're buying wrecked cars, we all wish they were damaged, super light, bolts a couple parts on, no big deal. But if I had to pick a GT3 that was wrecked in the perfect way, it might look something like this. The problem is that smoke and deal you think you just found where you're just gonna bolt on parts, send it down the road and go with a couple thousand dollars in repairs, Everybody else sees that as well. So me personally, I kind of want one that looks like this, where at least a fraction of that buyer pool, they're gonna be scared off by the damage. And though of course it does mean more work and more money invested on the back end, in my experience, almost always you get away cheaper. Hey, hey, check this out, check this out. This is STO behind me, three minutes away. Quick before it starts, no cheating, seriously. Pause the video, go put in the comments what you think this car is ultimately gonna sell for. Here we are. Wow, and now the Lamborghini. Can't say I've heard that before. Uh, who are you guys rooting for at this point? New York, Illinois, California? I guess I, I know it's New York and all, but I guess I have to be an East Coast fan. I hope the East Coast takes it home. Ooh. Uh -oh. Someone's got to hit it. Someone's got to hit him. Well, it was only $24,000 over. Two sixty-two. dollars Congrats to whoever won that. Hopefully insurance accepts the offer. And I guess you just got yourself kind of a half-price STO. We've now reached the confession portion of this video. I lost track of time. Completely. I got here at about 8.30 this morning. This place closes in three minutes at 4.30. Never in my life have I been to one single salvage auction where I feel like I've been here so long and saw so little. I didn't even make it to the outside portion. Right there over the fence, six-figure AMG. There's an M8 out there. There's an M5 competition somewhere in that general direction. I could definitely spend another day here. One thing I don't wanna do, spend the night here. So I'm getting the hell out of here. I've been to well over 50 salvage auction lots. As far as exotics go, we got a new king. I mean, look at this place. How can it not be number one? But I do need to stop talking and get out that gate before it closes and I am stuck here. So I'll see you guys next time.